Welcome back to Crypto Warehouse. In the fifth episode of Unlocking Crypto, we take a look at exchanges. Julian is here with Brogan. Hello. Hello. And he will be asking us eight questions about exchanges from a novice's point of view. So Julian, can you ask the first question, please? I will. Question one, what would be your basic description of a crypto exchange? Well, a uh, crypto exchange uh, is a location someone can go to uh, to trade uh, cryptos uh, with uh, other people who might be wanting to sell their crypto and uh, you can buy it uh, off them. Uh, that's my definition of an exchange. Okay. Now I hear a lot about decentralized and centralized. How is this important in a crypto exchange and why? So a centralized exchange, such as Binance or Coinbase, they are operated by a company. In Coinbase's case, they're listed in the American uh, Stock Exchange. In Binance's case, it's not released anywhere. It just has licenses to operate in Singapore, in Europe, and in America. Decentralized exchanges are not operated solely by any company. They are operated by uh, decentralized organizations that just keep the, the software of the exchange up and running. From a beginner's point of view, starting with somebody like Coinbase or Binance gives them the safety of knowing that they're with a company that can help them if they get stuck. With a decentralized exchange, it requires a lot more skill to use and it's not something we would advise for a beginner. With that in mind then, question three, who are the top three crypto exchanges for people to look at? Uh, the top three uh, I'd probably go for would be uh, Binance, uh, then Coinbase and then Crypto.com probably. Excellent. And when we talk about them being big, how big are these exchanges? So in terms of Binance, which is the biggest exchange, crypto mm -hmm. exchange in the world, that probably has somewhere in the region of 50 or 60 million users. In terms of uh, traffic, in terms of volume, they're also the biggest. I think they control 60% of all crypto uh, transactions in terms of buying and selling. Then you would have Crypto.com probably in second place. Although their volumes aren't as high as Binance, they estimate that they've got 70 to 80 million users on board. But those users tend to be newcomers to the market, so the volume isn't as high for them. So in terms of number of users, Crypto.com would be the largest with about 70 or 80 million. In terms of transactions, it would be Binance. And as I said, they've got about 60% of the entire crypto market going through their books. Okay. Question five, on a practical note. What is the process in using an exchange? For example, is there an app? And how do I add my money? Yeah, so uh, with these exchanges, they normally have their own apps uh, on your you know, your Android or iOS phone. Uh, you download the maps, uh, go to them, connect your wallet, uh, and you basically use it from there, buying and selling, you know, however you need. Um, just like that. And to add to that, do exchanges link to your bank account? I.e., is it seamless to get your money in and out? With the big exchanges, it's seamless. So with Binance and Coinbase and Crypto.com, you can connect it to your bank account. So whether you have a UK bank account or an EU-based bank account, you can connect them so you can transfer funds to and from uh, Binance or Crypto.com. With your debit card, for example, certain banks such as Nationwide and HSBC, they have an issue sending funds to places like Binance and Crypto.com. So you need to check with your bank if you can connect your bank account, bank account's debit card to that exchange. In most cases, you can. In some cases, you can't. Okay. Question seven. There has been a lot of focus in 2020 on exchanges, pretty much for negative reasons. Are they a safe bet? Uh, I think so. Uh, I think with the reserves, uh, some have like Binance, I feel like, uh, and with Crypto.com having an over um, over storage of the value of crypto they have on the exchange, uh, I think there should be quite a lot of confidence in the exchanges because um, they are trying to like there's proof of um, proof of reserves. Uh, they they are going taking many steps to try and show uh, to the public that they should be trustworthy, uh, and I feel like they've made a good effort doing that. And I think you should be trusted, yeah. Great. My final question, question eight. What do you see as being the future of crypto exchanges? I think there's going to be two types of um, exchanges in the future. There's going to be your existing crypto exchanges, like the ones we've mentioned already. But I think there will be 
a new type of exchange, very similar to Revolut, which allows you to buy and sell crypto without actually holding the crypto. So you're kind of trading it rather than holding it. And I think that existing banks, maybe Barclays, maybe HSBC in the future, I think they'll start to offer crypto. So rather than having to go to one of these exchanges which are listed in Singapore or Hong Kong, you'll be able to go into your Barclays branch and buy a thousand pounds worth of Bitcoin and the transaction can happen in store or on your Barclays account. Brilliant. That's how I see it happening anyway. Thank you both very much. Thanks Thank for your you. questions, Julian. What do people need to do now? Yeah, scroll down, subscribe, turn your notifications on so you don't miss any uh, content we do in the future. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Goodbye.